We'll officially get started. I'm sorry if I didn't greet you personally. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So excited to have you all here. Just thank you. We're really excited. A lot of work has gone into preparing this event. So um, we're so excited to share with you this, this virtual tour and, um, and then have time with our great team who are in Zambia who stayed up. It's midnight for them right now and they're wide awake. Some of them on energy drinks, some of them on natural energy, um, but I'm, I'm so excited that everyone will be able to connect with them. Hi Kings, uh, hi everyone, thanks for coming. All righty, and um, I think it's you know, about time that we will officially uh, get started if everyone's ready. Um, you know, for anyone who doesn't know me, my name is Julianne Savrick Casenza, and I'm one of the co founders. And we, oh, sorry. I'm, all righty. Okay. Sorry, everyone. If you can please stay on mute, um, that would be great. That'll help us with our flow. So, yeah, I'm Julianne, um, and I'm one of the co founders and the executive director of the African Education Program. As I mentioned, this evening, um, I'm joined by members of the AEP board and all of my colleagues. Um, so a big thanks to those in Zambia who, have, who are up late with us. Once again, welcome. Uh, welcome to the African Education Programs Hope Travels Fast virtual trip and fundraiser. Thank you so much for being here this evening with us. Um, many people in the Zoom room have actually traveled to Zambia with us on one of our many volunteer trips, but what's so exciting is to be able to share Zambia, share Kafue, and share our work with such a large group of people all at once. So um, without you know, further ado, we're going to unveil our virtual um, trip to Zambia. So just give us one second and, and we'll get that video queued up. One. My technical support is <laughs> a little behind. All right, one moment, please. Thank you, thank you. All right, it's coming soon. I told you I would build the suspense up right until you know the last minute. All right, everyone, please stay on mute. Um, and I hope you enjoy this virtual trip to Zambia. Welcome to Zambia, a big and bold country in South Central Africa. Besides our rich copper mines, we're best known for our stunning natural beauty. Most visitors come for the renowned safaris in our national parks to witness an impressive diversity of wildlife. We're also known for being home to a natural wonder of the world, the Victoria Falls, locally named Mosio Tunya, which means the smoke that thunders. This waterfall takes a visitor's breath away. But what most visitors would never see is how the vast majority of Zambians actually live. This is why we're taking you 270 miles northeast of the falls to the town of Kafue. Located about 40 minutes from the Zambian capital city of Lusaka, Kafue is home to the African Education Program's After School Learning and Leadership Center. Kafue was once a booming industrial center in the 1970s and 80s due to the numerous factories and neighboring mining areas and farms. But the city took a downward turn in the early 1990s when many industries shut down due to an economic depression linked to the drop in prices of copper. Unfortunately, the HIV AIDS pandemic hit simultaneously, wiping out a generation of working aged Zambians. One of the region's major highways, a transport route from South Africa that runs all the way north to the Democratic Republic of the Congo, runs through the town. The Kafue River is the longest river lying wholly within Zambia. Its water is used for irrigation and hydroelectric power, and many Kafue families depend on traditional fishing for their livelihoods. Now, it's time to meet our local guide. Hello, welcome to Kafue. 
My name is Lumuno Chongo and I'm the Programs Director at African Education Program. I am so excited to be your guide on this tour of Kafue. Let's get started. Right now, we are in town at Kafue River Moor. The town has transitioned into a big suburb of Busaka, our capital city. However, most people don't have money to shop from here. Let us go to where most people in Kafue can afford a decent meal. Lumuno is taking us to Zambia compound, known as ZC. It's one of Kafue's most densely populated communities and home to a large open air market where most buy their daily vegetables, dried fish, and more. Now let's go to Shikoswe, another community in Kafue, and meet some of AEP's young people and see where they live. AEP's families live in all different types of homes. Some are made with mud blocks, others with cement. Nearly 60% of AEP's families rent their home or are caretakers of unfinished homes under construction. Right now, we are at the home of one of our beneficiaries, Rachel Tembo, who is a grade 11 at Kafiri Day High School here in Kafiri. Rachel has been on sponsorship from the time she was in grade 8. She is so excited to meet all of you. Let's go in and meet Rachel. Rachel lives with a widowed mom in a small rented home which costs about $10 per month. Without the African education program and the center, I would be one of the kids who would be chased out of school if they were in school, or I would be one of the kids who would not be in school selling in the streets. Yeah. Mm, a bit hard since COVID-19 hit our community because the first reason is my mom's business slowed down and also schools closed down. We had lockdowns, we couldn't like associate with our friends, family members, and mostly I couldn't go at the center to do my favorite activities. Let's follow Lumuno a few blocks to another home. You are most welcome to Shintu Kabamba's home. Shintu is our 11th grader at Cafe Day High School and he has been on AP sponsorship for the past four years. He is so thrilled to have you in his house. Let's go in. Shintu also lives with his mom in a rented home which costs about $25 per month. Without the African education program and the center, I wouldn't have been in school. I mean, I wouldn't have reached the point where I am right now because my mom wouldn't have been able to pay for my school fees. And life would have just been hard because I would just be seated at home doing nothing. Education really means a lot to me because it's the key to success for every child. And I get to learn new things. And, and when I get educated, I might be successful in life and get to help my mom and the community. AEP's After School Learning and Leadership Center is also located in Shikoswe. Before COVID-19, on a daily basis, over 400 children and youth took advantage of programs focused on quality education through scholarships and academic tutoring, leadership development and volunteerism, gender equity, self-esteem building, menstrual health and reusable pad distributions, HIV AIDS and health awareness, nutrition, food security, and the arts and creativity. Why are AEP's after school programs so important? Let's hear from Lumono's colleague, Caesar, and see the Kafua school Rachel and Shintu attend. Zambian public schools lack almost everything. The teachers are not properly trained. We have few classrooms, we have few resources and books for students to use. The students also attend only half a day and often 50 to 50 students are in a classroom. So uh, most of the students are academically weak and need help, the help that we offer at the center. So we provide them with after-school tutoring programs so that we can supplement what they don't get in school. We try to help them reach a national level proficiency in all the subjects. In March of 2020, AP had to close the doors to the center due to the pandemic. 
well, the pandemic has really affected me in a bad way because it's very heartbreaking to me seeing a lot of people dying almost each and every day. And like the community has been affected because most of the families are really suffering. AP quickly transitioned its work to support everyone's safety and health while also keeping the youth educationally engaged while schools were shut down. Only 18% of AEP's families have access to a smartphone with internet. So the AEP team created a remote tutoring program via phone calls and printed learning packets to help them continue learning. AEP distributed reusable masks and on a weekly basis, the girls and boys come for a hand sanitizer refill. In addition, the AEP team has made weekly health check-in calls to all families with a phone to monitor their health and disseminate safety information. Despite the pandemic, AEP was able to recently launch a brand new and exciting entrepreneurship program. I have been trained to teach income generating activities to youths and right now we are starting our business training with our first beneficiaries. Because the center is closed, we have started a business training with 30 parents who are the mothers to the beneficiaries at the center. I believe that my work is important because I teach youths income generating activities. AEP pays for their tuition fees and school fees, but that alone is not enough to sustain their families. And I believe teaching them financial and income generating activities is one sure way to eradicate poverty. Let's now visit AEP Special Education Branch. Welcome to Read for Rose Special Education Center. Let's go in and meet our amazing staff. Most of the children need specialized in-person learning. By following strict safety measures, the special center has stayed open throughout most of the pandemic. Well, we're looking at the Zambian children with disabilities, uh, most of them do not go to school. And this is because of the stigma attached to disability and also a lack of uh, special education programs here in Zambia. So the introduction of the Read for Rose Special Tuition Center is a dream come true, not only to me as a teacher, but also to the students who are attending. Most of them do not have uh, access to a kind of uh, special education program. So I believe that these are the most vulnerable students and they deserve to have a meaningful education in their lives. And we have 18 students with different uh, needs. Some are visually impaired, hearing, and physically challenged. Others suffer from autism and uh, other mental illnesses. So depending on the disability, we teach them sign language, braille, reading, writing, counting, and also some basic uh, skills. We also offer them lunch, which for some of them is their, is their only meaningful meal for the day. My vision for AEP is to see it reach out to more students with special needs and to help them uh, have a chance of becoming great leaders in their lives, to see them have a brighter future. So AEP gave me a chance that I never thought I could have, and I would love AEP to give chances to more youths with special needs and more youths who deserve it. AEP is proud to now have 13 full-time team members on the ground in Kafue. Ten of them are alumni and began their AP journey when they were in high school. Let's hear what they have to say about their vision for AP and what youth leadership means to them. My vision for AP is to see it expand, not only in size, but also in the impact. I want AP to touch more lives, not only here in Kafue, but also in other parts of Zambia and Africa. So I also want AEP to continue empowering my fellow youths through the academic support, the various programs, uh, as well as this wonderful environment that allows us to thrive and also to achieve our dreams. When I started coming to the centre, I did not know what leadership meant. Now I know youth leadership means youths like me, we are responsible for building a sense of change in the community. Youth leadership to me means grooming the young girls and boys that we have at the center to be responsible leaders in community and for Zambia at large. 
by then by that i mean we need a wind of change we need new politicians young politicians young doctors young teachers Youth leadership to me means the empowerment of young people, uh, giving them the ability to make decisions and choices that not only impact their lives but also those of others. Just like the way AEP has given me the ability to develop into the young leader that I am today. Lumuno has one last stop for us before this trip is a wrap. Take it away, Lumuno. Welcome to the future site for the African Education Learning and Leadership Center. As you can see around me, it's now bare, and we hope to have a full running center soon. What does it mean for us to have a center right here? It will mean we we'll have more space, more than what we currently have at our small center. It will mean more kids will have access to our beautiful activities, like our reproductive health program and our leadership program. More kids will benefit from our feeding program. Our staff will have enough space to interact with our learners. It will mean kids from different communities will be able to flock here and have fun with us. Thank you so much for joining me on this tour. I hope you enjoyed having me as your guide. I certainly do. To our sponsors, our donors, and every single one of you who's supporting AEP, we say Zikomo, which means thank you. We will be able to build great young leaders in this community because of your help, because of your support. Young leaders that will not forget AEP and that will definitely won't forget you. Zikomo, thank you. Hi everyone. Um, Thank you. Uh, I, I hope everyone, oh, thank you. Thank you so, so much. Um, yeah, I hope you all enjoyed this uh, virtual tour as much as I did. Um, as you can see, the hope that each one of you brings to our team, the girls and boys and our community in Kafue travels a whole lot faster than airplanes. So thank you so much for being a part of that hope. Thank you, thank you. And I'm so glad to see that people enjoyed it. Um, so before we move on to the next part of our program, I wanna share our fundraising goals for this Hope Travels Fast campaign. Um, all of the work showcased in this video tour, um, you know, the work that was done before COVID, the work we've been doing during the pandemic and what we'll ultimately return to afterward wouldn't be possible without the incredible support of the generous and committed donors like you, like everyone who's in this room. So our goal is to raise uh, $75,000 during this campaign. This amount will ensure that all of our life-changing programs like Read for Rose Special Education Program, the new entrepreneurship program, um, our current COVID-19 initiatives can all continue through the rest of the year. If we're able to raise $75,000 through this campaign, you know, we'll be able to carry on our work worry-free and just continue creating young leaders in Zambia. So I hope that you'll take a moment this evening to visit our event fundraising page and make a gift. Uh, you'll see that the, the virtual tour is not even live on the page. It debuted for you. Um, so when you go to visit it later tonight, the, the video will officially be there, but you were a part of this big premiere. Um, so thank you. I, I, I hope you'll take a moment to consider making a gift. Um, the link to the website is in the chat box. Um, you have options to give online or by check. So thank you in advance. Um, I'm really excited to announce that if we raise $10,000 immediately tonight, it will be matched by an anonymous uh, generous donor. So please, 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 I hope you'll consider making your, your gift tonight um, so that we can get that match. So thank you in advance. Um, I'm so glad everyone enjoyed it. I wanna give you all a chance to start to unmute and, and share um, and ask questions. So what we're gonna do now is we'll be going into breakout rooms we have three great panels lined up for you. So this is gonna be a, a little bit like speed dating. Uh, you'll spend 10 minutes with each panel um, and the panels will automatically rotate so you don't have to worry too much about Zoom rooms and, and choosing where to go. So 
We'll have a Kafue panel. Um, this is the panel where you get to ask anything about Kafue, what you saw in the video, about the town, about life there. And um, the moderator for that panel is our board member, Marie O'Deal. She's better known as Mama Mario. And on her panel, she has Joy, our Zambian executive director, and Annabelle, our donor relations coordinator. Then uh, we have a special education panel. This uh, will be moderated by our development director, Pam, and that's with our special education team, Febby and Annie. So that's for all your questions about our special education work. And then finally, we have a, a general program panel um, that I'll be moderating with Lumuno, who you know pretty well from the video as our guide, um, Caesar, our academic programs manager, and Bernard, our entrepreneurship coordinator. So those are the panels. Um, you will have a, a, a team or two other team members um, of the AEP team and they'll be your group leaders. So they'll actually be with you throughout the next half hour or so. If you're in the chat box with a question, they'll be there for you. Um, they'll be there during the transition. So your team leaders will get introduced to you right when you get into, into your room. So in just a second, this is the only click you'll have to make tonight. Um, there will be a pop-up on your screen to accept moving into your first breakout session. So if you're having trouble, just stay here and we'll help you out, help you get into your breakout. Um, but yeah, we'll see you in the different rooms. And thank you again for being here. And we're really excited um, to, to get some discussion going and get everyone unmuted a little bit. So just uh, wait just a minute for our, our breakout pop up. And, and here we go. Let's go. See you soon. Uh, Hi, hello, hello, hey. welcome. Hi, hi everyone. Hi, hello. hi, hi. Hi. Um, everyone here, you have the special privilege right now of being recorded because I'm the one recording. So again, if you're not comfortable with recording, please turn off your, your yeah. camera. Um, but otherwise, happy yes. to happy you to see you. Nothing. Yes, you do. We're uh and so I'm just gonna wait one second. I think everyone's probably here. Um, so hi everyone, I'm so excited. Your team leaders are Andrew and Masmo. Andrew and Masmo, can you wave to your team? Um, Andrew is a resource development coordinator. Masmo is one of our monitoring and evaluation coordinators. They both finished university, high school and university with us at AEP. Yeah, very, very proud of them. Um, so they're here, they'll stay with you. Um, they're in charge of the chat box if you wanna you know, ask questions through there. Um, when the panels are moving, they'll still be with you. So, um, and then yeah, we're the program room. So if you have a question about programs, um, raise your hand or if you wanna, I think we may be okay with just unmuting and asking, um, but we have Lulu. Benard and, and Caesar here to answer your questions. So either raise your hand and unmute or, yep, go ahead. The floor is open, finally. I don't want to talk anymore. <laughs> sure, Peggy and, yep, and Perry. What are the most, what are your most um, uh, pressing needs for programs at the moment? In other words, what, what programs are, are meeting with the best success and where you know are you looking to expand great question i think lulu do you want to start i think lulu's like it's here smiling go ahead and unmute lulu and and go ahead uh thank you thank you so much um currently our programs have have shifted due to covid and right now the most pressing uh program that we may need is space um we we we, we need space for a bigger center. Um, I saw a big shift during COVID. A lot of parents uh, lost their jobs. A lot of industry workers lost their jobs. So we had to turn away some kids. We couldn't sponsor them uh, because we didn't have enough uh, finances. So a big center would mean more kids and more funds would mean more scholarships. So the shift in our community has, very, has been very devastating. Thank you, I hope I, I answered that. <laughs> Thanks, Lulu. Who else has a question? 
All right, so I'm going to jump in. So after we get you the building, are there any lessons learned, things that you might shift, things that are like you really want to go, yes, this is this is impacting the lives of the children or of the adults? I will. Um, I want to give an, another chance to. So uh, interesting that you asked for the adults, Kelly. So Bernard, why don't you you start there and then um, we'll add on. All right. Uh, thank you very much. That's a great question that you've asked. Uh, so at the moment, uh, I have been trained to, to teach entrepreneurship and uh, business uh, uh, managing skills. Uh, so we have started an entrepreneurship program with 30 parents. These parents are the beneficiaries. Uh, are they, they are the mothers, the beneficiaries to the kids who are our beneficiaries at the center. So we've started a business training with them and we're hoping to grow. Once we have more space, we'll be able to not only train 30, but we'll expand to even more uh, uh, parents. Thank you. Can I quickly just add on two, yeah. two things? Um, another great shift for us would be the kids who have an eating area. So right now we don't have an eating area. The kids get to eat outside. So they would have an eating area. And one of my uh, awesome transition or a great thing for me would have a counseling room. So currently I don't have a counseling room. I have to kick out the executive director from her office if a child wants to talk to me. <laughs> So if I had a castle room, I would have that very quiet and, you know, quality time with the kids. So an eating area and a castle room from the top of my head, those are the two that would be so awesome. And, and I'll add on too, um, Kelly, I think for us now the focus is really on how do we cut poverty at the root, right? I think we over the years have really been you know kind of adjusting to the problems we're seeing the kids are having and and our programs are incredible and do put a temporary band-aid but it's like how can we really start to cut poverty at the root so that's where bernard's entrepreneurship work is critical you know we're actually looking into um, could we open an aquaponics community learning center that would be both an income generator for our organization, but also a learning space for our families to have better harvests and do better urban farming. Um, Caesar's work on the academic side, um, Caesar, why don't you unmute and, and you know, share, you know, having that big space, what that would allow us to do on the academic side, because we are seeing that more kids in college, more kids in universities, you know, more kids getting those higher level leadership skills are so important. So it's like, how do we start really addressing poverty at the root as opposed to as a band-aid? So Caesar, why don't you share a little bit of a big center? You know, how would that help enhance, you know, our academic support work? Hello, yeah, thank you for the question. So us having a big space will help us uh, have enough room for our kids because right now we have a lot of kids and uh, we have very few classrooms. So us having a big class, uh, big space will enable us have a lot of classrooms, enable us reach out to a lot of kids because right now we don't have enough space as uh, Madam Lulu said. So we end up turning back some kids because we don't have enough space, but us having enough space will allow us to have a lot of learning uh, classes, learning programs, and uh, help the kids. Because as uh, Julian said, we are trying to cut poverty from the roots. And uh, if we nurture these kids, if we empower these kids through leadership and uh, education, we are going to create a generation that will be able to eradicate poverty in Zambia and Africa. And thank you, Caesar, so much. And I have to say, we also have Violet here. She's our entrepreneurship um, assistant. Um, she's in the room. She's a team leader too. Sorry, Violet, that I didn't introduce you to everyone. So say hi. Great. Yep. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, yes. I hope, Kelly, that that helped. You have to know, I'm a former teacher. So I'm like, if you get the classroom, what kind of cool stuff are you going to teach? 
you know, what does that look like? To, is it tutoring? Is it, I love the entrepreneurship. Tell me about, tell me a little bit more about that. So uh, Lulu, do you want to take a stab to share a bit about, you know, everything we uh, we would be doing? <laughs> So apart from just uh, the, the classes, you know, biology, math, we get to have room to do art, uh, leadership. We get to do creative club, which the kids love. They love uh, entering into a world that they create, you know, they tell their stories. And in this world, there's no poverty, there's no hunger. So we get to do so much apart from learning. And, you know, sometimes those that don't really like math, when it's time for spelling bee, they are boating to me, they are running. <laughs> you know, they're like, yes, let's do something. And maybe that day we are all pirates, or maybe that day we're all dinosaurs. So instead of just them being in a class, uh, we get to do have room to just uh, explore a more creative um, way of, of learning and, and teaching. Yeah. And, and just to add on to Lulu, the new center will have a STEM lab. So we'll be able to do a lot more in the STEM space. Yeah, um, Caesar is actually, his major was in mathematics. He's a math brain. Um, so he'll be able to, to do a whole lot more with that. Um, like Lulu mentioned, there's a dedicated art room. Um, there's a multimedia computer lab. There's a full library, you know, um, I think you got from the video when Caesar was talking about the schools that kids go to, they're so under-resourced, you know, so many kids in a classroom, they're, they're dependent on rote memory, writing notes and, and learning that way. So the fact that we can have this creative big center with just different spaces, like Lulu saying, just focus on creativity, on dreaming, on tech on the STEM, you know, it's just, it's, it's really exciting. So this is all a teaser actually for a campaign coming later in the year. Um, it's the big buildup. So, oh gosh, we have one minute, maybe one more question. Perry, I think you have a question. Go ahead and unmute. Uh, I'm sorry if we'll leave in the middle of the unmute answer. Leaper. There we go. Uh, on these programs, are you operating alone or in a vacuum or do you interact with either local or national government, university, local schools? Or are you guys out there all by yourself in the Oasis? Uh, Lulu, you want to start that one? Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. So we we try our best to also just uh, incorporate our our local government. We we work with the social welfare guys. So those are the we report to them. We also belong to. Um, a district committee or a child protection committee. So we are we are also connected to that. And we also try our best to also look with, work with uh, local NGOs that we partner with uh, from time to time to, you know, just work together on um, topics like reproductive health, uh, leadership and mentorship. So we want to get um, our kids exposed to different uh, types of people, not just, uh, you know, our boring faces. <laughs> so just uh, get uh, the kids interacting with more people. That way a leader will be groomed to know how to work with different uh, types of people. And, and thank you, Lulu. And I would add on, um, we have very close partnerships with our schools. So once we have the big center, we'd also look, Caesar would be looking at how do we tr provide training opportunities for teachers, you know, not just academic support in the sense of the kids, but how can our center help bolster the schools, right? And, and get them to a higher level. Um, so yes, we're definitely not trying to be siloed in any way. Um, we have some great University partnerships here in the US as well, um, James Madison University, University of Maryland, um, Penn State, uh, Great Valley. So, you know, we're definitely not trying to be alone in any way, shape, or form. So, well, thank you so much, everyone. This is great. We didn't get cut off in the middle of a <laughs> in the middle of an answer. So I think our panel's gonna magically disappear um, in just a second, but you have Massimo, Andrew, and Violet here. Um, they'll keep taking care of you. Thank you for your great questions. And, you know, I hope, I hope you enjoy the next, uh, the next panel. And um, yes, oh, I don't, yeah. Okay, we are still here though. Um, I'm, I'm hesitant to like take one more question and, and then get cut off. Um, so uh, maybe we could, does someone have one? Hey, if we get cut off in the middle of it, we'll, uh, I have a question that came up, Christine, from 
from our last group, Christine. Um, there are a number of, uh, of uh, uh, Zimbabweans that live in Kafue. Do they come there to work or why do they come to Kafue? I think uh, most of them come here for business. Like they do a lot of business from here and their businesses go pretty well here. So most of them come for business. Yes. Thanks. What, what, kind, what kind of business are they doing? Um, selling different products. Yeah, selling different products, like having big shops and they're having a lot of different stuff. Most of them are cosmetics and others are food stuffs. Cosmetics. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, Christine. Hi, everyone. Um, hi. <laughs> we flew into your discussion. Um, so hi. I'm so glad your team leaders are taking care of you. Um, it's, I'm so happy to see so many friendly faces. Hi, everyone. Um, so we are the program panel. Um, I have here Lulu, Caesar, and Bernard. Um, and I don't know how your last group maybe was operating, but if you have a question, you know, raise your hand or unmute. Um, but yeah, any questions about programs? Um, yeah, go ahead. Who wants to start? Phil, go ahead. Yeah, one uh, wanted to hear me. What have been the successes as, as businesses that have developed from that? Oh, from the entrepreneurship training, Phil? Right, right. Uh, well, Bernard, uh, we actually just started. So I'll let Bernard talk a little bit about the program. This is literally just weeks old. So, but Bernard, can you share a little bit about the businesses maybe that the, the women in your group are doing and what they're dreaming? Well, uh, thank you very much. That's a, that's a great question. So we just started the business training program uh, for the women. These women are the parents to the beneficiaries who are the kids at the center. So we have managed because of this small space that we have at the center and because of COVID, we've only managed to start with 30 parents. So these, these parents, uh, we are training them for a, a business training program, which is only for four months. And after the four months, they, they get to graduate. But most of them, their businesses vary from uh, selling secondhand clothes, uh, selling foodstuffs, rice, uh, different small, small businesses. Uh, we train them, uh, we groom them, the simple basic uh, business ideas and concepts, and then they get to apply them. So we hope that their businesses grow and their businesses expand. It's more of a, a mentorship uh, training program. So we get to monitor every process that they they go through. Thank you. Do, you. do you have loans for them? I mean, how do they start their business? So for, yes, thank you very much. Uh, for most of them, uh, they already have small businesses which they are doing at the moment. So we are just trying to help them grow those small businesses. But there are some who have business ideas, but do not have the capital or the money to start those businesses. That's the another challenge that we are facing at the at the moment. Mm -hmm. And we well, Bernard White or uh, I'll jump in quickly. Um, yeah. So what Bernard is actually doing, Sally, is putting together a resource module, which is in addition to everything that he learned as as a business trainer. So looking at specific resources that will be able to connect you know, our, our parents do. AEP is not trying to get into micro lending and um, that scares us a little bit. And um, that's a lot of work. That's not our expertise, um, but we're partnered um, with a group called Join the Journey who are a micro lender. So we would be kind of connecting graduates of our programs to them. Um, Bernard's looking into what's called village banking, which is a whole system of how parents can put their monies together and give themselves loans. Um, that can also be done at our local bank. So um, Bernard's in the process of really developing, sorry, Bernard, to speak for you. I get so excited about it. Um, no, it's okay. <laughs> developing those resources to exactly your point, Sally. So they're not graduating and then, and then what, right? Um, right, right. 
Yeah, we're just trying to be careful. We already do a lot. So we're trying to be careful to not, you know, over. <laughs> oh. oh, I have a quick question. What's the timeline on the new, the new building? Uh, that's a that's a very good question. Um, I'll take this one, Lulu and 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 Benard, if you don't mind. Um, so, uh, and I'm so glad, Andy, that you're here because I'm I'm really excited to say this. Um, it's uh, we are officially going to be launching the capital campaign in August. Um, August will be our 15 year anniversary of the center, so we're pairing our anniversary with the official launch of the capital campaign. Um, thanks to Andy's company, our, our computer lab is funded. Andy, I Ooh. promise you that money is there um, and, and waiting and eagerly, eagerly awaiting to, to be built. Um, if all goes according to plan, we would start construction in April of next year, Lulu. I, I'm really, this time, pretty confident that this is all gonna come together, so. Um, yeah, I know. She's so excited. She's our number one advocate for we need space. Um, so yeah, it's, it's truly happening. Um, our walls are now really limiting the impact that we can have. So it's, it's, it's eminent. <laughs> how, many, right. how, how, Sorry, many people, how many people are you serving? I mean, obviously, it, you feel, it sounds like you're growing outside your walls, like you said. How many people are you serving now? And are they all graduating? And I got a lot of questions. And then they are off to the world. Some are going on to college. And some are basically have certificates to go straight to work. Is that fair? Yes. So Lulu, uh, Lulu, do you want to take this one and outline quickly how many we're serving at what, you know, kind of age, like what, you know, from young learners to alumni? I'm putting Lulu on the spot. <laughs> so uh, currently we have 250 from grade eight uh, to 12. These are the ones who are receiving the AEP sponsorship. And we have 32 who are in college and university. So uh, our young learners is a group of uh, 100 uh, kids from first grade to seventh grade. So about 200, sorry, 200 from first grade to uh, seventh grade. That's so these are not yet at, um, they don't uh, receive the AP sponsorship yet, but they're the ones that we work with. And starting from eighth grade, uh, we, we get to mentor them from first grade to seventh grade, mm -hmm. and they can apply for an AP sponsorship. I, I don't know if I answered that. Yeah. Well, and, and then, so I'll add on. So we have our young learners, they then go into scholar, high school scholarship mode, who then go into college prep. So right now we have 32 currently in college and 40, <laughs> Lulu, that scares the heck out of me, um, 40 currently in college prep. So that's during their gap year when they're giving back to the center, earning their college scholarships. But um, Lulu and Caesar um, have a whole curriculum for them, preparing them to go to college and university. And then, you know, when they graduate, they join the alumni. So Andy, all that to say, we, we already have 450 high school graduates, um, over 80 college and university graduates um, who've been through the program. So that's the thing with us is a scholarship is over many years, right? When we look at our kids, because they can start so young with us. And then even when they enter high school, you know, they're with us for four years of high school, four years of college, and then and then more. Um, I hope that answered the question. So we have over 400, I mean, we have close to 500 total in the program, if that makes sense. Yeah. Wow. So uh, being in the program involves direct sponsorship for what, school fees, food? Uh, what, what, what does it involve and how much is involved at each level? Or is it geared to each recipient? Sure. Um, great question, Phil. Uh, I guess I'll take that one. Sorry, you guys. Um, so for a scholarship, and I'm sorry, there's one minute left, so hopefully we won't get cut. Um, we, uh, the direct sponsorship starts for at that high school level. So for $300, that's a scholarship that covers um, school fees and, and, and the scholarship itself. 
We asked for $600 a year to provide a, a, a child with everything that we offer, right? Um, all of the programs at the center, food, all of that is $600 a year. Once you get to college, it's a, a range between $1,500 and $2,500 because obviously tuition goes up, room and board costs, things like that. So those are the current markers. Um, what we're exploring is the fact that we offer so much to our young learners, Six miles. It's like, uh, oh, what was that? Uh, we we moved. We get we get. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hi everyone. <laughs> it's good. Good day, hey. everyone. Hello, hello. Um, just a warning because I'm the host. My sessions are recording, so if you're not comfortable being recorded, please turn off your video. But I hope everyone will stay on with us. Um, I know it sounds like your team leaders were taking care of you. Um, and we are the program panel. So I have Lulu, Caesar, great, you're back with us. Hi, um, and Benard here to answer any uh, program questions. Yeah, so before we, before we even get to ask questions, and I think we had a very interesting question from the Boyans. Mm -hmm. I think this goes to Lulu. So she was asking concerning the activities that the youths take part in and specifically on art, because she saw some art drawings in the video. So she was asking if she could just put more flesh on that one. Go ahead, Lulu. Uh, thank you. I, I just need a bit more context so that I don't really know which oh, the uh, art, I'm going to. The art program, Lulu, just more about what the art program um, does and what types of activities we do. Okay, so the, the art program, in the art program, the kids get to learn about different types of art, ranging from African art to different types of art around the world. Um, and we get to draw, uh, they get to use paint, they get to use crayons. Sometimes they make different um, art pieces like um, bead mosaics or cloth mosaics. Uh, they also get to just venture into different types of art, like abstract art, which they didn't really understand at first, but it's something that they've grown to love because they, they thought art is just, you know, just draw something that you can tell that's a tree or that's a house, but they've grown to love things like abstract art. Um, so they love the cave art. They love that. The, I, I saw them just uh, learning more about, you know, different and the history of art, how it started and where it started. So it's it's a different um, and very broad uh, class. And I'll just add on, my favorite is when we do recycled art. So the kids actually have to go out in the community and pick up whatever they can find, um, whether in nature or on the street and then create art. That's one of my favorite activities that we do too. So. Thanks, great question, Pat. Thank you. Other um, questions, programs, Isha, yes. Yeah, I was just gonna say about, you know, you have so many age ranges, right? So how do you um, modulate like, you know, what types of activities for which, or do you have a big classroom with everybody in there. How, how does that work? Um, uh, Caesar, do you want to start with on the academic side how that works, and then Lulu maybe on the the, the program side, the non. Hello, uh, great question. So for the academics uh, side, we have we grouped the the learners. So in the morning, we have the, the young learners, which we call the munchkins. So they come to the center in the morning up to around 12. And then in the afternoon, we have the, the secondary school students. So for those, we group them by grade. So we have the grade eight that we have, they have their own separate class. And we have the grade nines, 10, 11s and 12s. So we actually group them according to their grades. And uh, we also group them we, when it comes to academics according to their performance. For those that we see need uh, more attention or need one-on-one uh, -on -one help, we actually create a class with them and we pair each student with a teacher so that they can get the most attention. Then for the rest that are in the average range, uh, we put them in a class 
where we actually still try to divide them to reduce the number so they can have that one-on-one -on -one interaction with the teacher rather mm -hmm. than having them in a big class because that would be the same situation they have in the government schools that they are from. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Great. And Lulu, do you want to talk a little bit how we, we break out um, on the you know non-academic side? Yeah. So for the young learners, that is uh, first grade to seventh grade, uh, they have their own activities according to their level of understanding. So they do art, uh, music. Um, then for eighth grade to uh, 12th grade, we have different programs for each uh, group. For, for example, Spelling B has uh, group A and group B. So we have like uh, the, the very start of spellings to advanced spellings. So, and a child can go to the next group when we feel and we have a system that they have, um, you know, they're able to, to spell. And um, leadership club is mandatory from grade 10. So once they they hit grade 10, once they're grade 10, they, are, they, they have to be in leadership uh, club just to start that leadership grooming. So mm -hmm. each, each category has the different grade uh, and different age. Yes, thank you. And I would just add on for Lulu, especially around our like reproductive and sexual education, that grouping is really important because obviously, you know, at different ages, you can talk about different things in, in different ways. So and that's one of Lulu's favorite things to do um, is that reproductive health work. So. Gotcha. Great. Other, thank you. Great question. Other questions? Yeah. Yes, How about... Question. Oops. Oh. No, no, go ahead, please. Go ahead. Okay, how about um, dancing and parties? I know young people love to move. <laughs> Great question, Pat. Lulu, I know there was a chat going on as well. It got asked in the, in the chat too. Lulu, do you want to talk about dancing and performing arts that we do? Yes, so we also have the music uh, club and the drama club uh, and also the dancing club so they get to dance they get to write songs and perform songs they get to write out stories and act out the stories uh, they get that we have a storytelling club so they get to learn how to make videos how to take pictures so yes young people do love to dance so they, they get to do all that um, all that stuff great stuff at the center so that's why i'm advocating for a big space <laughs> uh, beautiful <That> is... <laughs> beautiful thank you bella i think you had a question oh yes i had a question uh so one thing that i enjoy uh, about what you guys are doing it seems like you're trying to build in critical thinking within our students uh which i feel i hate to say this but it's counter what they learn in schools and I do appreciate that because I struggle when I'm interviewing candidates back home for jobs. Like it's more like a rote type of learning style. So I'm just curious to see how you balance those two out and how you measure the effectiveness of what you're doing. Because it's a big thing to go up against. I mean, a curriculum that's very rote uh, approached. Um, Caesar, do you want to start a bit? And Lulu, you can add on um, just about how we, we kind of structure our academic support to be different than what's in schools. I'll go ahead and unmute. Yep, there you go. <laughs> yes, so uh, I totally agree. Our education system usually supports short learning. Most of the schools, I was also in the, the system, and uh, most of the schools, most of the programs that are there, you just find that they just give you the notes, you write, you, most of the learning is tailored towards passing the exam, not actually having to apply the knowledge. So with our tutoring sessions, we try to make them more interactive. We don't really focus on us giving them the notes or us uh, helping them solve the questions, but we actually give the we actually organize our lessons so that they, the students can actually come up with the solutions. So for our tutoring programs, we are trying to generate the kind of thinking that will enable the learners actually be critical thinkers, actually create and solve problems rather than just having to remember everything that they learned. So we try to pair them in groups and give them real life problems for them to solve. I think that's, one way of us helping to stop the road then. Lulu, do you wanna add a bit? 
think I, I have a few seconds. So I'm yeah. just going to uh, talk a bit more about our college prep uh, program. We spend an entire year with our high school graduates, getting them ready for society, getting them ready for professional work. Um, and we, we, we work uh, together with them just to give them the, the needed tools. For example, how do you do a presentation? Uh, communication skills, how, are you, how can you be a good communicator? Uh, how do you sit for an interview? How do you present yourself? And these are actual practical work that they get to present to us. And uh, we try our best just to get them involved, get them to critically think and think outside of the box. And, and uh, great answers, uh, Cesar and Lulu. And Bella, to your point about impact tracking, that's why we're really excited now to have two monitoring and evaluation coordinators who will be really starting to formally track that type of impact um, that we, you know, we know we're having it because we see the success stories, we see the leaders that we have, but how can we actually prove that now in numbers? And that's where in the video, Cesar mentioned, you know, we're striving for international levels of education and proficiency, not just, you know, um, what gets a pass on Zambia's national exam. We're really striving um, to, to empower our kids with more knowledge. And again, that, that critical thinking and, and, um, and just creativity, right? That's why we have so many different types of activities. So. All right, everyone, I think we're being summoned into the main room. Um, Quite exciting to host this kind of like Zoom meeting. Oh, Ohio. Karen is from Ohio. Virginia. Oh, New York City. I also live in Queens. Awesome. Look amazing. I think Julie is here. Julie, you can take it away. Hi, everyone. Yeah, let us know where you're coming in from into the chat box. We didn't ask that earlier. Um, we, we have different continents represented, different states, different cities. Um, thank you again, everyone for being here. Um, just give me one second. I got caught off guard here. One moment. Um, yes, just thank you. Thank you. I hope everyone uh, enjoyed those breakout rooms and, and um, you know, got to, got to ask the questions that you had. Um, I'd like to take a minute right now to just say thank you to everyone who made tonight possible. The entire AEP team, uh, the Zambians who are still up and, and awake, thank you. Um, Thank you to the AEP board and the members who are here, and in particular, my parents, Mama Mario and Peter, for all your help preparing this event. Um, a big shout out to our volunteers who made our virtual tour video possible, Michael Candelori and Akende Munalua, thank you. Um, and last, but definitely not least, we have our Zoom guru, Carlo Fabros, who some of you maybe said hi to. He's been behind the scenes tonight making our breakout room um, magic work. So thank you everyone who made tonight possible and thank all of you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for continuing to love, you know, and support AEP. Um, before you turn off your computers and your iPads tonight, I hope you'll consider making a gift and helping us reach our goal of $75,000. Um, there was a question about the match. Um, so before the event, we'd already raised $9,000 to our goal. So for our match to be possible, if we raise $10,000 tonight, so if we can reach uh, $19,000 on that meter, or if you plan to give by check, you can actually send a direct message to Pam, Pamela O'Brien, our development director right now, and let us know your pledge. If we raise $10,000 in donations and pledges, Tonight, um, we will have that match from this incredible anonymous donor. So we hope you'll consider um, giving. You know, when I look at the AEP team here tonight, um, I'm really reminded of how far we've come over the years. Um, I have to tell myself constantly not to tell them kids because when we first met, that's what they were, kids. And even me, you know, I was a, a, a teenager in my early 20s. Um, and so... You know, these alumni who now make up our team, many of them have been with us for a decade and they really represent the decade of investment that we make in each child who, who steps through our doors. And, and they represent how all of our programs come together and empower a young person to reach their full potential and become a leader. So, you know, when you consider making your gift to support our work, um, please know that you're not just supporting a center or a particular program, 
You're empowering the next leader in Zambia who's ready to create change in their community and end poverty for good. So thank you everyone for being here. I'll say zikomo. Thank you, thank you. Um, it was such a pleasure to show Kafue to you all and to be with you. Some of us will be hanging out for a few more minutes. So if you want to stay and ask more questions, we'll be here. Um, I, our, our Zambian team will probably head out so they can go to sleep. Um, but a few of us you know, who are, who are in the US will still be here if, if you want to hang out for a few more minutes, um, feel free. If it's time to go, have a good evening. And just thank you again for being here. Thank you for sharing this with us. Thank you, Julianne. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.